looks a bit of a stay at home. In fact, he didn't leave his flat for a quarter of a century. Early this year, he was chauffeured to his tailors for a trouser fitting, and that's been it. He's lived half a lifetime with a view of a brick wall. Like I said, all this now, what you see, all those things a lot there, is my, well, like you say, I was told you, the, 20, the last 26 year, I've just been looking out there. It could be better, you know, if the, if the brick wall weren't there, I could see more into town, but I'm happy with it, you know, and some you see more people walking about. Once upon a time, there was a different Jack, one who went out, one who had a woman who loved him, a Jack the lad who had his chill. Her name was Brenda, and she knew just the way to tickle Jack's fancy. When she got to know, like, stew and dumplings, I went, you know, when I seen her, I said, I made something for you. I said, have you, love? What is it, stew and dumplings? And I'm not kidding you, I'll never forget this. I says, Brenda, how many dumplings have you made? She said, I've made 40 for you. <laughs> 40 dumplings, yeah. She said, if, so, she said, if you eat them, I don't think you'll move. But here they were lovely. I ate a bit. She made me a right big dish and I ate it all for her. And when I were eating it, she was sat there proud as could be. Jack and Brenda had four good years together. Then, tragically, he lost the love of his life to cancer. Then he lost his mam and his gran. A black cloud came over Jack Taylor. Jack stopped in for 25 years. I suppose if that tragedy hadn't have happened to me, maybe I might not have stopped in. But it, 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 it was so I wanted to be by myself. A lot of people used to say, well, from what I got told, he deserves a medal for what he's done, you know? A lot of people say, well, two days in the house, I'd be crazy, but 25 a year. But I did it. After decades indoors, Jack's become like a piece of strange performance art. His neighbour, Doris, his niece, and a home help bring him shopping from the outside world. Jack's solace is his growing fame. Shall we go in the kitchen or in the bathroom? Where do you want to go first? Let's see the bathroom first. OK. Jack's is a world lived in microcosm, where the smallest functions require gargantuan effort. Now, this is my little bathroom, which I can just manage to get in. Now, as you see, that's my bath. It's made of cast iron. It's easy getting in, but it's hell hard to get in out. Did you have a standard size loo there, Jack? Oh, well, toilet, I mean, like I say, you know, I can just manage on it. Really, I mean, that was already in when we come, but I mean, like I said, they don't make them for me anymore. But that should really have been a lot bigger. But like I say, God willing, I can manage them. You know, and it's that way. Behind you there, above the, on that shelf there. Yeah. There's a green can. Oh, yes. What's the, show me that. The green can? This? Well, that is simply a, uh, an air spray. <laughs> is that, is that to do with the hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Well, not really, give a squirt now and then, you know, so, you know. <laughs> and uh, like I say, I believe in toiletries. I have my bubble bath. Jack's remarkably nimble uh, at avoiding above-the-neck questions. You know, I think I've got everything by the little duck, put it that way. But uh, once I get in my bath, I love a bath. Air lacquer. Air lacquer. Is it air lacquer, that? It's a supreme hole. It's air lacquer, then, isn't it? Is that the secret of Jack? So that's what I must do. I think Jack dies his hair as well. <sighs> that's a good shape today. Put some cream on now. Jack lives to a precise routine. He's got just one family photo, but his whole life is a monument to the past, a shrine to his mam and his gran and to the love that ran to fat. 
This was my grandma's bedroom. I used to say to myself, well, nobody's allowed in here, only myself. I mean, I've been on, I've come in, you know, and I've looked about and I've looked like that and I've just, I've started to cry and I've gone back in the house and I've just been heartbroken crying. And uh, I'll always do that, I always say. She died in that bed. And when I knew she was dying, taking her last breath, so to speak, I like hugged her and uh, I kissed her and I realised what was happening and I thought, well, this is it now. And uh, she just died in my arms and uh, that's something I'll never forget as long as I live. Sometimes I visualise I'm, I'm looking at her there and uh, it, it just sets it off, you know. She didn't want me to stop in the house all those years. Because she used to say, you're a young man, you should go out and enjoy yourself. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those things. I know it was half of my life, it was a silly thing to do. But I, I did it and I've no regrets. No, no, I don't regret what, what I did, no. Happy with that, yeah. Happy with that. You might think Jack now lives a monk-like existence, having lost his family and his true love. You'd be wrong. There's a pair of shoes behind me here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them, to me, they're priceless. Because of my girlfriends, who I love, Joan. So, that little card. <laughs> Shall I put them back in their yeah, special please. place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard the phrase, um... Getting your foot underneath the table, Jack. <laughs> I have, yeah, yeah. So you're not actually alone, are you? You've got well, some... no. I've got a girlfriend. What about Jack and these women? Like I said, he's had two in his life, and that's all he has had. The one that died, I, didn't, I never met the one that died, but the, the one that he's got now is a person. She's a very nice woman. 